For so many of us software engineers, the system design interview feels like the final boss, right? It's this big, ambiguous challenge that stands between you and that dream job. But what if I told you there's a repeatable framework that can turn all that anxiety into straight up confidence? Well, today, we're gonna crack that code. So, here's our roadmap. We're gonna kick things off by defining what system design even is. Then, I'm gonna walk you through this super powerful four-step framework. It's basically a plan of attack for any crazy question they might throw at you. So picture this, you sit down and the interviewer just drops a question like this on you. It's huge, it's totally open-ended. And yeah, it's easy to feel that little bit of panic creep in, like where do you even start? Well, this is exactly the kind of challenge we're gonna learn how to conquer, starting right now. Before we can even touch a massive question like that, we gotta understand what the interviewer is really looking for. And here's a hint, it's not about writing flawless code on a whiteboard. So what is system design really? You know, at its core, system design is really the strategic, high-level part of engineering. It's about being an architect. You're not laying the bricks, you're drawing the blueprint. You're thinking about the big picture, you know? How do we make this thing scale to millions of users? How do we make sure it's reliable and doesn't just fall over? And of course, how do we make it fast? And as you're gonna see, it always, always comes down to making smart trade-offs. So how in the world are you supposed to tackle this huge architectural challenge in, what, a 45-minute interview? Well, you use a framework. Seriously, think of this as your secret map for navigating any system design problem. It's this reliable guide that's going to take you from that initial overwhelming question all the way to a solid, well-reasoned solution. And this right here, this is your entire game plan. It's a pretty simple four-step process that just turns all that ambiguity into clear, actionable steps. We're going to walk through each one, starting with what is, I would argue, the most important one of all. Okay, this is it. The single biggest mistake I see candidates make is jumping into a solution way too fast. Your first move should never, ever be to start drawing boxes and arrows. No, it's to stop, think, and ask a ton of questions. The whole goal here is to get clarity and to shrink the enormous scope of the problem down to something manageable. Now, asking questions like these is brilliant for two reasons. First, it actually helps you understand the real problem you're supposed to be solving. But second, and this is huge, it shows the interviewer that you're methodical, you're thoughtful, and you're collaborative. You're not just some lone coder. You're an engineer who makes sure they understand the requirements before they build anything. And boom, this is the power of a good question. Just by asking how the feed should be sorted, you might get a response just like this. And suddenly, that whole idea of a super complex ranking algorithm, it's completely off the table. That one question just saved you from designing a system that was 10 times more complicated than it needed to be. All right, let's get to the blueprinting phase. Once you've got your requirements locked down, it's time to actually start sketching out the major components on the whiteboard. This is like your 30,000 foot view of the whole system. We're talking about the big building blocks and how they all connect, without getting lost in the weeds just yet. So you'll probably want to start with the basics, right? You've got your users, the clients, you've got servers to handle their requests, and you have databases to store all the data. A really key piece here is a load balancer. That's what's going to stop any one server from getting totally slammed. And by separating your web servers from your database, you can scale each piece on its own. Honestly, this is the foundation for pretty much any big system out there. Okay, and this is a fantastic moment to just pause. After you've got your high-level sketch, check in with your interviewer. Just ask, hey, does this general approach make sense to you? That simple step turns the interview from you just talking at them into a real collaborative design session, which is exactly what they want to see. Okay, so you've got your blueprint, and the interviewer has given you the nod. Now, they're going to want to poke around a bit. They'll guide you to focus on specific, tricky parts of your design. And this is your chance to really show that you can think through the complex stuff and justify your technical choices. So the interviewer might hit you with something like, so how would you scale that database? Or what's your caching strategy going to be? Look, you don't have to be the world's number one expert on everything, but you should be ready to talk about the pros and cons for a few key areas like these and really explain the why behind your choices. And remember to listen really closely here. The interviewer's questions are basically a giant hint. They're your guide to what they think is important. If they keep asking you about the database, well, that's your cue to put your energy and focus right there. All right, we're in the home stretch now. You've outlined your design. You've gone deep on a few key components. This last step is your chance to leave a really strong final impression by thinking critically about the very system you just designed. Now, let me be clear, this isn't about admitting your design has a bunch of flaws. 
It's about showing that you have a mature, real-world engineering mindset. Great engineers know that every system has bottlenecks and weaknesses. Showing you can spot them proves you're thinking about the long-term health of the system, about operations, and about future growth. So for example, in your wrap-up, you could recap a big decision you made, like your database choice. You could say something like, so we went with a NoSQL database, mainly because its flexible schema is perfect for our data, and it's built to scale out horizontally. I do want to call out that a key trade-off here is that we're giving up the strict ACID compliance you get with SQL for this more flexible model. And that leads right into another classic trade-off that's always great to talk about. You can show a much deeper level of understanding by explaining how you balanced consistency versus availability. Did you make sure every single user sees the absolute latest data every time? Or was it more important that the system is just always online and gives a response, even if the data is a split second stale? Actually saying, for our newsfeed, we chose to prioritize high availability, shows you get these real world compromises. This is a question you should just be asking yourself. Proactively, you should try to identify a potential bottleneck in the system you just laid out. Is it maybe the database write speed during peak hours? Or is it a service that has to fan out notifications to millions of users? Showing that kind of awareness is a huge, huge plus. And this right here is the perfect way to end it. A system design is never really finished. By suggesting future improvements, like adding more robust monitoring or maybe exploring a different caching layer, you show that you see engineering not as just a single task, but as this iterative process of constant improvement. And that is the mindset of a great engineer.